In this video, I will show you the framework I used to get a job in Fortune 500 company without knowing the native language of the country I was applying to. I will show the framework on example for mechanical engineering job, but this framework can be applied to any job of your choosing. Hello Newtonians, Mate here. In today's job market, finding a job can be challenging. There will be setbacks and disappointments, and it's really important to stay persistent. I received 200 rejections before landing the job in Fortune 500 company, and that job was the only one that I used framework that we will discuss in this video. Generally speaking, we can either have time to prepare for new job opportunities, but mostly we have to find a job with existing knowledge, skills, and experience. Even though the approach uh, is similar for both types, there are some differences there. In this video, we will focus on the second type, getting a job with existing knowledge, skills, and experience. Before we dive into the framework itself, let me give you a slightly different perspective on the job hunting, a mindset shift, if you will. In today's job market, companies are competing with each other to attract the best talent out there. You can often see on their website explaining why you should choose them, what is the culture in the company and what the benefits are. Some companies are more honest than the others. You probably heard that some of these we are the best company actually suck. Suck. Uh, one thing is for sure, they're all trying to sell themselves as the best option out there. So. The only fair play then is that you, as an applicant, do the same thing. Through your cover letter, CV, and if applicable through your mechanical design portfolio, you should also present yourself as the best option out there. The second thing I would like you to think about is think about your skills. You probably have more skills than you realize. So, for example, maybe you are working very well in a teams, so you have a really good team working skills. Maybe you are a very well spoken person and you know how to elaborate your opinion, so you have a very good communication skills. So there are many skills that we have that we don't actually realize that they are skills. And this is something that you need to sit down and figure out for yourself. You know, think about what are the skills that I have that I might that I'm not presenting very, very well. Sit down and think about the skills that you have. Ask yourself, what skills I have that I'm not maybe representing in the right way? This will help you later on when you start writing your CV and we will get to that point later on in the video. Usually it's not the case that you have every skill polished to the level required in the job posting, especially if you're starting your career. Maybe you are the most hardworking person ever, and you are able to learn and digest high amounts of information in a short time. Maybe you would be the most loyal and giving person in the company. But recruiters does not know you. They only know what they see in application. Here is where I want you to shift your mindset. Getting a job with existing knowledge, skills and experience, assuming that you fit to the job description to some degree, is all about the communication and perspective. And I'm not saying that you should lie in your application. As you will see in the rest of the video, it is about emphasizing your strengths, not about lying or manipulating. The idea is to represent yourself in the best possible authentic light. For this, I have a framework that you can follow to use to create a perspective like you are the best option out there. There are seven steps that you need to go through. Job analysis, self-analysis, synthesis, CV preparation, applying, interview preparation, and interview. The idea with this framework is to give you a structured way to approaching a job hunting and you can adjust this framework to fit your career goals or your particular life situation. If I'm doing well so far, hit that like button. Let's move on.
Assuming that your knowledge, skills and experience does fit to the job posting to some degree and your employment would be a good fit for both parties, the first step is to analyze the job posting and what is expected from the candidate to get the job. Just write down all the requirements and have them visible in one place. You can either write it down on a paper or create a simple spreadsheet in Excel. Let us now dissect the job posting in the format that we can see each skill individually listed. On the left side, you can see how the job posting looks like on website. And on the right side, you can see how we dissected each of the skills from that job posting to the individual requirement listed. The second step is to analyze yourself compared to what is expected in a job posting. Be honest with yourself, that is the most important part. This is anyway only for your eyes. Understand very well where you are, what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Use the simple 1 to 10 point scale. I wrote everything equal and higher to 7 is my strength and everything below 7 is my weakness. The third step is to see what we can do with what we have. As you can see in the right column, I wrote some comments about those skills. Our strengths are something that we will emphasize in our CV. We will also look into the list of the weak points and see how to develop those to the next point. For example, if you do not know anything about the topic, see if you can get at least basic understanding of it. If you have basic knowledge, try to go a step further. Any improvements that you can make will count. This step should be done as long as you have uh, time until the interview. You have a lot of resources from me and creators like myself that can help you understand mechanical engineering better. The fourth step is to tailor your CV to emphasize your strengths that are related to job posting. Write more about the things that you are good at and that fit the job posting profile. For the skills that are required but you are not proficient in it, write honestly something in lines of basic understanding or similar. For the skills that you do not possess, leave them out. In case you are applying to a field that requires a certain level of creativity, prepare your portfolio. I was applying as a mechanical design engineer and I sent my project portfolio as evidence of my ability to connect creativity with technical work. At the beginning of the video, uh, we talked about you know having the skills that we don't really realize that we have the skills. And here is the point where you could actually include those skills. So uh, if you are an organized person, attentive to details, or you're resilient or things like that, make sure to write them in your CV and uh, that will definitely help you uh, getting opportunity for the, for the interview. The fifth step is to send your application. In case you are applying via email or you need a cover letter, write a short introduction about why you think you are a good fit with the company, emphasizing previously identified strengths. For example, you start with a small paragraph about their company and how you resonated with their slogan and how that is something that you are also passionate about. Do not write it if you are not. And then proceed shortly to write how your skills, strengths, fit for their company. End it in a way that you are expressing excitement to hear back from them and that you are looking forward to meeting them in person. Always write politely and respectfully. Start with dear, miss or mister. Finish with thank you for taking the time to read my application. I wish you a nice day, kind regards, etc. Uh, you know, uh, just normal human things. From all steps listed before, this one is the most important and if you are going to adjust this framework, I would highly recommend not to skip this part. Once you got invited to a job interview, the sixth step is to prepare yourself for it. You already have a list of job requirements, 
so you can assume what they could ask you. Also research on the internet what is the most common question that you could expect during the interview. Lots of hiring managers are looking for the same just from the other side of the desk. Not every hiring manager is working in HR. Also, there are some keywords that all managers like to hear, like commitment to the company, hard work, learning, improving, teamwork, and similar. And you should figure out how to use those without being too obvious. The challenges during an interview are following. How to get your story straight so that you do not come out as a liar or inconsistent. You have to spend time understanding yourself and getting your thoughts clear. You cannot come to the interview and give completely different answer to two similar questions. For example, if you are preaching hard work and in one case you stand firmly behind it and in other case you are backing down just because you think that is what they want to hear, you are in for a bad time. Usually, a smart hiring manager will test you to see if you are saying things just to say them to please them. The second challenge is how to turn your weaknesses into opportunities. It is normal that you have weaknesses in certain fields, especially if you are a young person. But how you communicate your weaknesses can make all the difference in your interview. I was working on a designing steel structures and I spent some time leading a small team of engineers. Then I moved on to designing industrial burners before I had my interview for the job that was handling fine mechanical parts that are not weighing in a few tons of steel. Let us now check how it looked like. What experience can you take from your previous job to this one? There is no connection between this job and the previous one because we are talking about two different worlds of mechanical engineering. This is the worst answer that you could give. If you worked in a different field and you are applying to a job, that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have skills to transfer from your old job to the new one. Let's now look how I actually answered. What experience can you take from your previous job to this one? From the technical perspective, I use the software that you are using, but I had an opportunity to learn something more valuable. I had a chance to lead a small engineering team and learn about the teamwork from a completely different perspective. I learned that teamwork is actually more than just people working together. It is also how you communicate and how you motivate people to do what needs to be done and how to resolve conflicts. I saw how it is to be on the other side of the desk and this experience for me as a young person is invaluable to learn at this age. Do you see yourself again in that position? I think that at this point I'm too green for the magnitude of this job, but if that is something that the company would require me to do, I would definitely think about it. From the previous example, you can see how I turned my weakness of not having the right experience into the opportunity for me to emphasize the other skills that are my strength. If you have other examples of how to turn your weakness into a strength, leave a comment below and you just might help someone. Here is a pro tip. In case you are asked a question that you really do not have the skills to answer, tell something along the lines of, if given the opportunity, I would definitely invest extra hours in learning this skill. I'm young and I believe that I can get through any challenge with the right mentorship and leadership. I spent hours and hours every day leading up to my interview thinking about all the questions I could encounter during the interview. I was not planning to have this opportunity presented and go there unprepared. Also, investigate what questions you could ask them to show interest in the company. Ensure that you have one general question and one industry specific question. More in the next step. The seventh step is interview. The, the seventh step is interview day. 
you will definitely be nervous about the interview, but if you did the previous step right, you will feel prepared. From the moment you set foot on the company's ground, smile and greet anyone you see. Uh, treat anyone with respect like they are your hiring manager because you never know who is who. So the first contact is the most important. Smile, shake hands and introduce yourself. Ask them how they are. Compliment the company. Some building you got here. I like it. Be relaxed and confident. Being creepy is a no-no. During the interview, listen carefully to the questions you are asked and ensure that you stay on the point when answering. Make eye contact, have positive body language and even try to mirror their body language. And please, for the love of the world, please don't scratch your butt during the interviews. At the end of my interview, I was asked if I had any questions for them. My first question was, Based on what you told me about your job and your experience, you could be working for any other company. So why do you work for exactly this one? The second question was industry specific, regarding the future of the industry and the company's positioning to the future trends. Of course, I researched this before the interview. After you finish the interview, thank them for their time and tell them that you're looking forward to hearing back from them. Get recommendation letters from your previous jobs or from your professors. This can be used as evidence of your character or expertise and definitely could give you some bonus points during the CV screening process. After the interview, write down all the questions they ask you that you can remember. Then try to write down the answer you gave to them. If you have a few interview circles, you want to ensure that your answer align with those in previous circles. Finding a job can be challenging, especially if you have limited experience. Good preparation work is crucial to stand out from the rest of the applicants. I would encourage you to try and apply to the jobs that you think that are above your current level. Sometimes you will not get the job, but at least you will leave a good impression and the opportunity could come later when you expect it the least. In case you get a job that is higher than your level, it will stretch you and your skills will grow exponentially. Following this framework, with good preparation and diligence, finding a job should be an easier and less terrifying process. Of course, the more time you prepare for interview like this, the easier it will get. As for everything, you need to give yourself enough time to master it. Okay, Newtonians. I had so much fun making this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of content and you would like to see more of it in the future, make sure to smash that subscribe button and check my channel for more interesting videos.